Hey, Kirsty here, Makeup Loving MET. It's been a while since we've caught up, so I thought I'd um, catch you up while I put some makeup on. And I'm also eating my breakfast um, in between things, so my video should probably pause while I chew up my breakfast. <laughs> so what have I been up to lately? Well, we had foster puppies for a little while, and they took up a lot of my time and energy, my house, and they chewed up some shoes and basically were puppies. Uh, they have now been sent out to a farm, because they are farm dogs. They're, they're bred to being on a farm, and um, they're learning how to be farm dogs, so that's fantastic. They'll be loving that. I've checked up on them a couple of times, and uh, the lady that is, you know, looking after them, she said that they're doing really, really well, so I'm very excited for that. So my house is nice and quiet again with just my three dogs. Um, today I have to get ready, I've got work, um, to start with, and then, um, my daughter is studying to be a teacher, and she's just finished an art course, and, um, they've got an exhibition, so I am going to that, and apparently she's drawn, or she's painted a picture of me, um, should I be worried? Probably. Uh, my daughter's interpretation of me. <laughs> Apparently it's pretty awesome. Um, and I'm really chuffed actually that she found me as inspiration. Uh, amputee wise. Right. Um, where was I? My daughter rang. Making sure that we had everything sorted for um, the art exhibition. Right, MET wise, what have we been up to? So, I am having a very good run with my prosthetic that I have at the moment. Um, it fits pretty good. It's a smaller one, um, which I'm really happy with because, you know, the more it looks like a leg, the happier I am. Um, and... I've been getting um, into it just about every day. I'm probably managing about mm, between six and eight hours a day to be in it, um, which is really good. The first time around after the first surgery, I, you know, it took a year and I still wasn't in my prosthetic, um, even for like, you know, an hour kind of thing. You know, I was having difficulty getting it on because obviously I had all of that extra um, skin and stuff that I didn't need and it was causing issues. Um, so it's super exciting for me to be, um, up and about. I have gone back to the swimming pool. I need a different brush for this color. I prefer it to be a little bit more intense. Um, yes, yeah, so I've gone back to the swimming pool. I plan on doing like a little video, um, after I've checked with the swimming pool that it's okay to record how I get in and out of the pool um, because obviously I don't want to impede on anybody's privacy and been doing aqua jogging with my husband he sinks like a stone it's hilarious um, but yeah so we've oh well I've we've been getting into more sort of cardio exercise um, my physio and I have been working on some arm strength to um, make it easier for me to hop with my crutches, you know, when I don't have a prosthetic on, um, just to sort of, you know, have that upper body strength to kind of handle it for a while. And, um, then yesterday we went to the velodrome. We have a local velodrome, which is, you know, where the cyclist indoor cycling happens. And, um, we walked around the top edge of that, and that was actually quite a distance. We did three laps, and because it's shaped, you know, like that on each side, and it goes around, you know, um, there's a lot of stairs um, going up and down um, as it follows the flow of the velodrome, and uh, that was really, really good. I was, you know, getting some cardio workout as well as, you know, practicing my balance on so getting up and down stairs. It's funny because as an amputee, 
you do have to, well, as you're learning to sort of negotiate stairs, there's that hesitation, for me anyway, um, of uh, do I have enough room on my step? Uh, there's no foot feedback, so is my foot centered on the step, or am I overlapping the edge of the step? And that's both for up and down, but down's a little bit scarier because obviously you've got that forward motion. Um, whereas up, you can kind of see where you're going, and if you're going to fall forward, you can kind of see <laughs> that you've, you know, you can put the bra the brakes on a bit better. Um, so yeah, so that was heaps of practice on stairs for me. And um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not really the kind of person who likes to go to like, you know, do exercise just for the sake of exercise. I like incidental exercise. So I like to be doing something else and just having to be getting exercise. Um, but oh, I feel like my eyes are all over the place today. <laughs> um, my eyes are all over the place. I make up. We'll go with that. It makes more sense. Um, yeah, what else have we been up to? So I, I'll probably video the velodrome thing again as well. Um, and I'm my yoga instructor is back from Germany. Yay! Um, she's fantastic. So I work with her um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis in my home. Um, and she helps me with balance and just you know overall sort of body um strength uh she also helps with you know just keeping my mind quiet you know proper breathing all those sorts of things i just i love it it's very um rejuvenating for me and she does have a youtube channel here she's my inspiration and I will link it below because I think she's um, wonderful. So she works with horse riders as well. Oh, that is so glittery. I don't know if you can see how glittery it is. It's awesome. It's funny, when I'm doing my makeup, um, quite often I have to remind myself to trust the process. You know, I get this far in it and I'm like, oh, Chrissy, you just look like, um, you know, someone's punched in the eyes, basically. <laughs> You don't look that great at all. But we trust the process. We'll come out in the end looking better. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> so, um, I have been busy studying as well um, towards my degree in psychology. And... I've had lots of assignments, and one really big assignment, um, well I'm only doing one paper at the moment, as I sort of recover from having this recent, most recent surgery, and um, it sort of had like a whole collection of little assignments leading up to a big assignment, and I've just handed in that big assignment, and it was such an interesting topic, so the, the topic was, well the topic that I chose that was interesting to me was food insecurity and how it impacts people in terms of their mental health, psychology, um, but also um, in obesity. Uh, and there's been lots of studies done all over the world about it. Um, but I chose to focus um, on New Zealand and the impact that it's having on, you know, Kiwis. And I think to some mild degree, I probably experienced food insecurity as a child, and it definitely has probably played a role in my relationship with food as an adult, but not to the degree that a lot of Kiwis are experiencing. And it's quite distressing to even open my eyes to this, because we're a culture of clean, green, pure, um, that we are an innovative, you know, land of plenty kind of thing, you know, so how is it even possible that we have people who are struggling to, you know, find, well it's not even a case of finding food, it's finding nutritional food, food that keeps them healthy and well, um, that propels them forward in life, and 
it just seems really bizarre to me that as a land of plenty, you know, and predominantly farming and and growing crops and things, how how do we have people who don't have quality food? Um, but we do. That is definitely a case. And um, I don't know the answer to it. My, the purpose of my um, assignment was to uh, point out the connection to, you know, between food insecurity and obesity and mental health issues. But, um, yeah, interesting and distressing. Um, the mum and me wants to, you know, go out and grow a vegetable garden and then, you know, set up little stalls all around town. You know, here's your food. Mm. And the thing is, we do have those things in New Zealand, you know, the little um, neighbourhood um food swap sort of areas but when you drive past them um they're always filled with you know again the less nutritional you know sort of food so your packets of pasta your cans of spaghetti and and yes those will fill up people but it won't offer them any kind of nutrients and then you've got to worry as well okay look i'm, I'm totally off topic here <laughs> because i got really passionate about this um which hopefully translates well into my assignment Rather than just me jumping onto a platform and, you know, doing a Kirsty rant. Which, you know, it's a thing. Um, I've also been, you know, on a personal note, working through some childhood trauma with, an, with my psychologist. So I'm signed off for all the things regarding my amputation. Um, can't say enough about EMDR and how effective it is. Although <laughs> I've just said a very short sentence about it. But it's fantastic. Um... It's not an easy process, but I found it a very worthwhile process and that it's allowed me to sort of move past, um, you know, a lot of the trauma that I've had regarding, you know, having multiple surgeries and, yeah, just not loving, you know, the changes to your life. So, you know, being an amputee, it definitely changes your life. Um, and... It's funny because recently um, somebody pointed out to me, you know, and they're not wrong, um, that whew, maybe a little bit too fluff, um, <laughs> that, you know, it, um, everything's harder as an amputee. Um, and we're, we're trying to plan a holiday, um, potentially Rarotonga, possibly somewhere else. Um, you know, and we're sort of negotiating like where to stay, how close to the beach it is, whether or not after I've spent a day at the beach in the water, will I be able to get back to, you know, wherever we're staying, um, you know, under my own steam, because I don't plan on taking, you know, my wheelchair or anything like that. Um, you know, so there's all these things. So yes, it's definitely harder, but I'm grateful for, um, you know, the lack of pain, I'm grateful for the, you know, even just the fact that I can consider um, going on this holiday, not being too exhausted by pain and, you know, just overwhelmed by life so much, you know, like, this is, this is, this is good, you know. You probably don't know, but trust me, it's good. <laughs> um, yeah, so these are these are situations, you know, like I'm, I'm you so have to think a little bit deeper about what I'm doing, but um, I'm doing them, you know, and that's exciting. We got um, and last weekend we got my motorbike battery all charged up. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if you can tell outside; it's snowing. It's spring, spring, and it's snowing, October, people, um, and <laughs> we haven't had snow all winter, but we'll have it in spring, um, <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, I won't be out on it this weekend unless the snow completely gets washed away and the sun decides to come out and it warms up a wee bit, I'm not that confident on my bike that I would tackle icy roads, um, 
but I am really looking forward to getting back on it. Uh, a friend of the family's also just um, not long ago got on a bike um, himself and he's real keen to go out on like you know little group rides and and things like that and he's a lot braver than what my husband and I have been in terms of you know leaving the city boundaries and stuff like that so um, not that we haven't we have but he you know <laughs> one of his second or third motorbike rides was like you know a six hour bike ride up into the other part of the country um, <laughs> so <clears throat> we've not done that <laughs> but yeah he's you know we're thinking about doing like a coastal trip and stuff like that so I'm really looking forward to doing that and having lunch somewhere and yeah then just cruising back it's gonna be so much fun um what else are we up to yeah just um my son's getting married in February all going well um and we've been getting ready in terms of just trying to figure out what he's going to wear and um yeah really just trying to get him organized actually it's it's yeah it's a little bit like pushing stuff uphill um but we're getting excited about it and you know excited for him and for his partner as well so it's going to be good it's going to be a great day. We'll make sure it's a great day. And that's kind of it really. Between all of those things and working, um, my life has felt super, super busy and I haven't really had time to stop and video. And I'm even doing this, you know, while I'm having my breakfast and getting ready for work and my day. But I guess that in itself is also a testament Testament? That's not a word. Testament? You know what I mean. Um, to, or is that a word? How do I get so tangled about this? My goodness. It's hard to believe that I have a university degree. It's a good thing it's not in English. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, you know, the fact that my life is so busy. <laughs> um, just shows really just how quickly this recovery is going after this surgery um you know having a shorter leg has definitely made a, an impact for me and sisters not twins my eyebrows sorry um <laughs> and yeah that I'm up and at, at it so much sooner than I was after the first amputation so um you know at the first amputation uh, sort of almost a year into it I was looking at having further surgery I'm three months now into since the last um thing and I'm doing all of these things and it's fantastic I feel like I'm finally kind of getting the hang of this I definitely have days where it's not um it's not great and I have to put my prosthetic to one side I have to you know just do some self-care um you know watch some television or read a book or do something that doesn't require me to actually be mentally engaged on any level um and yeah just kind of recharge um and I definitely do get some burnout uh just from things in general um but it kind of I, I try to keep my weekends um for just you know chilling as much as I can you know like we walk the dogs and we get the groceries and stuff like that but we don't really sort of overcommit to too many things and I try not to study or anything in that time um one of the things that I enjoy doing just to sort of get out and about is my new little car my Fiat Abath 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 um <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit odd um <laughs> it's so much fun it's it's not about comfort to be honest although it's not uncomfortable it's got bucket seats in it you know so it's a racing car um but boy does it zoom and you know when I have to go up to Dunedin or you know really anywhere <laughs> I have so much fun in it and I spend all my time giggling and carrying on because I'm having so much fun and it just takes off it just whew, you know, you put your foot down just a tiny bit and you're you're zooming. You have to be really careful about the speed limit. 
Um, so yeah, it's, it's lots of fun. More coffee. <laughs> I'm one of those people that if I don't get my coffee in the morning, nothing's going to go well for anybody. <laughs> mm. Right. I need to get a new brush to do some under eye smudgeroonies. Um, yeah, what else have I been up to? Not much, really. Well, <laughs> so just to kind of um, expand on how the swimming part of it and how I sort of get around, I probably do it different from other amputees. I'm sure we all have our own way of, of um, managing things. Uh, I've decided to go to the swimming pool with my wheelchair. Um, I find, you know, getting in and out of my wheelchair rather than getting in and out of my prosthetic a little bit quicker and a little bit easier so I can get into and out of the pool faster. Um, our swimming pool has a chair lift thing that you can hop into and, you know, the lifeguard people will lower you in to the pool. I don't use that. I find it really creepy. <laughs> It's like I'm out of control. Somebody's going to drop me in the water. Or I'll, I'll get wet. Um, <laughs> so I prefer to um, basically just kneel down onto the, by the side of the pool and then, you know, full body flop into the water. Um, I To get out of the pool, um, again, I don't use the chair. I prefer to put my foot into the steps that are, um, you know, either the steps that are either on the side of the pool or in the, you know, in the wall of the pool, 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 um, and, um, I put my foot in then, and then I just lift myself up with my arms, and until I'm in a standing position, or a kneeling position, and then I get up, and by that point, um, you know, my support person, whoever's with me while I'm swimming, has got my chair for me, um, I'm thinking, I haven't gone by myself yet, but I'm thinking that when I do go by myself, I'll just have to have my chair close enough that I can pull it forward. So my chair is really light. It's a very, um, it's a very fancy chair <laughs> and um, it's really easy to kind of just lift and move around. Um, so all I have to do is just sort of unlock the wheels and bring it closer to me. So I feel like it's doable and I'll just need to get brave enough to go by myself at some point. It's funny, these things, you know, in the past, like going to the swimming pool and stuff like that by myself, it was sort of like a no-brainer, you know. It was just like, oh yeah, I feel like going for a swim, you know. Off I go to the public pool. Um, now it's like, you know, am I brave enough to do this? Am I, am I prepared enough? And, and, you, and you think about it. <laughs> and then you get there and it's all fine. You know, <laughs> so it's like you've worried for nothing. Um, but it does take, uh, for me, a bit of courage to actually step outside of my, um, whatever comfort zone I've deemed myself to be in and actually, you know, get out there and do it. Isn't this the cutest little, um, what do they call it? Face setting spray. And to be honest, one is enough. <laughs> um. And then I just dab that in. See, I look like I'm kind of like almost ready to take on the day. Mostly. I'll get some work done before I have to. Um, before I have to. I don't have to go to my daughter's thing. I want to go to my daughter's art exhibition. I'm so proud of her. I'm an artist myself. I have a degree in art. Um, and I love to paint. In fact, you can kind of see off onto the corner there um, a canvas that I'm working on. Uh, I'm painting for a wedding present. I'm painting um, a picture for my son and his partner in their new house. Um, so, yeah, that's my wedding gift. It'll take a while. Um, and I'm using a different um, medium that I normally use. Normally I use acrylic and this time I'm using gouache. And it's just a little bit of a learning curve. I've used it before a long time ago, but um, I'm enjoying the differences. 
and the learning curve. Um, so yeah, so I'm excited about my daughter, you know, finding her artistness, artist, <laughs> her inner artist, um, and you know, for me, art is a form of self-expression. It's a form of communication. So, um, you know, the fact that she's finding her own voice in art and her own self-expression and things like that, it's a very empowering too. Um, and I really, I'm just super glad for that. I'm glad that she's developing her voice um, and the methods that she communicates. So, yay. Happy. I think that's the lashes done, kind of. My mum told me the other day that um, the mascara that I'm using at the moment makes my eyelashes look like spider legs. I'm going with that's a compliment because I want to think it's a compliment. <laughs> but if you don't like spiders, I'm guessing it's not a compliment. Um, I'm, I'm obviously okay with spiders. It's flies I don't like. Flies are moths. Ugh. I got chased out of the house by a moth the other day. No kidding. Like, moth was inside. I was outside. Wasn't coming inside until the moth had left. It was a bit of a standoff. My husband thought it was hilarious. I was distressed. <sighs> but moth and I both survived and ended up in the right side of the door. Right, now to decide on lip. I've got a pretty neutral eye. I'm wearing pink t-shirt. Do I go for a neutral lip or do I go for pink? Mm, I might go for pink. So my husband and I, I feel, I'm not sure if he's actually participating in this, but he is just through his actions. Uh, at the moment, having a toothpaste standoff um, in that it's almost the end of the tube of the toothpaste and I don't want to get the other one out from the cupboard and I don't think he does either <laughs> which is really lazy because we stand right there in front of the cupboard um it's, it's the principle of it, really. And it's getting to the very, very, you know, like, hard to get cornered dregs out of the toothpaste tube. Uh, and um, <laughs> every time I brush my teeth, I'm like, surely he's going to change uh, it over for the new tube. But he hasn't. And I refuse... And so it's a Mexican standoff over the toothpaste tube. Does anybody else play silly games like this with their significance? <laughs> because this is a silly game and it's been going on for like three or four days now. And it's getting really like, you know, frustrating trying to get the toothpaste out. Of it. It's actually harder to get the toothpaste out of the tube than it would be to get the to new tube out of the cupboard. But that's not the point. <laughs> so yeah. Oh dear. Things we do to entertain ourselves. Uh, sorry, I'm making a lot of noise. Ooh, shiny lip gloss. <laughs> and such a cute little baby pink. Uh, I am a magpie. Interesting. This is a wet and wild one. I don't know how long I've had it. But it's um it's very nourishing for such a shimmery. Yeah. I look like I'm ready to be out in public. Which is always a good thing. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully it hasn't been too traumatic going through my last few weeks and my attempt to get ready for the day 
Um, I hope that you, if you did like this video, that you would consider liking it. And if you would like to see more of these videos, would you please consider subscribing? Have an awesome day. Take care. Bye.